Please. Well, the, the, the sons is a little, it's always a little bit different than uh, than what my solo stuff would be. My solo stuff, I really kind of focus it a little more on the songs. But the sons were, I think, what we're going to aim for at this point of the game. It's a little more open, a little more blowing space. I mean, we got a guy in the band who's been in the band since since the first album named uh, Jeff Palmer, who's, a, who's maybe as good a vibes player as anybody on the earth. So we try to open up some space for him to play. And let him let him do something like that solo on uh, uh, Soul Explosions. There's a there's a cool there's you know the guy can play. I mean there's no question about it. So we're uh, even though the Suns is a kind of a uh, a song based band, I think that the jam based audience in the United States are going to probably get behind us. I mean I hope they do. I know, I know a lot of the jam based magazines and online things that they've already gone. Whoa, the Suns are something everybody should check out. So we're. I think we got a shot at, uh, you know, at, at taking it up. You know, what I always refer to as getting it over the hump. You know, move it up to the next to the next level and see if we can get things moving. And I think with Will in the band, who and Will is, uh, you know, everybody knows him. Anybody who knows him, they realize what a what a pop artist, and uh, you know, really he's a good he's a really good pop singer, good pop writer, R and B singer, R and B writer, great player, uh, but his. And his education, I mean, he can play like Bill Evans if he wants to. I mean, he's an awesome piano player. So he's kind of looking, you know, when we talked to him about adding him into the band, he was going, so, man, I'm kind of looking for some blowing space, a little, little stuff I can play a little bit. Because even when he, does his, when he performs his own stuff, he kind of finds himself performing the album version of his songs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take his songs we're going to open them up a bit open it a little bit and, and show off the fact, not just show off the fact that he's young and he's an awesome singer and songwriter. No, let him, let, let the him songs play. go somewhere. Yeah, let the songs open up. they wouldn't normally go. If it was now, to record them might be a different story. We might want to tighten them up a little bit to record them, but when you play live, open it up and let it fly a little bit. Tamara does a lot more in terms of like, I got an idea for a song and it goes like this. This is what the lyric is, and then Will will kind of think about it for a minute, and, and hop and then, in and do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, he'll 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 have some music, probably already. When I think of something like that, but my co-writer that I write, I've been writing with forever, Michael Caruso, that we wrote "Won't Get to Heaven" and tons of songs. And he's the one. I I just we usually get the three of us since the first song that we wrote with Will. I guess you know. Because I, I get him in there, because it's it's a little probably a little easier to get him, you know, going back and forth with him than, you know, um, me, you know. It's, it's, it's so so we just we just get a little group action going. So needless to say, the Champlin House is there's yeah, it's always just something a very going musical on. House yeah, and, you know, and well, and so uh, you know we just had uh, our third writer, and he just kind of. You know, he he does what I can't do. As Tamara and I had an idea for a song called No Place Left to Fall. We had the idea for a couple of years and never got around to writing it. Well, Michael Caruso comes out to our house in Nashville, and I just kind of play the song. He says, hey, great, well, let's do this and this. And it took Michael to get the two of us to finish writing the song that we started two years before. Yeah, because we didn't... And, uh, so sometimes, sometimes it just takes that extra little oomph to get things going and I think sometimes Tamara and Michael get into Will's stuff I mean Michael and Will were writing Tugging on Your Sleeve and I listened to it and I went I walked downstairs and said let me hear it I listened to it I said you guys don't have a chorus and Will said no here's the chorus and he played the bridge what is now the bridge I said it, no that's a bridge it's just too complicated to be a chorus let me write a chorus so I got in and wrote the chorus like one sitting I just sat down and played it and they went well, put that right in the middle and there's your song. So, and he went and did a little demo on it just with like a little drum loop and a Fender Rhodes and a vocal or two. I think that's a good song we'll be doing with us, oh, hopefully gonna, with I the songs. Yeah, I've already, already locked that one down pretty much. Peter just found me. He just found me somehow. He just uh, emailed me and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to be in town. I'm doing a project. And he, and he mentioned <laughs> some of the people that he was working with. Russ Ferrante and Jimmy Haslip and guys like that and I said well you know he sounded like a really cool guy and uh, very and, sweet and he said uh, he said let me drop by the house he dropped by the house and left me a track and played me one or two tracks of stuff he was doing I went hey this stuff is good so I just uh, I just said well let me write this one song I think it was uh, Living in Your Eyes 
And I wrote the tune, and I said, well, that's pretty cool. That's, you know, I hadn't written something like that in a little while, and I went, okay, I'm going to get that. So I called him. I said, dude, I got the song finished. He says, well, great. Well, come down to the studio tonight. Let's knock off a vocal. So I went to the studio, and I got there, and, uh, and I was, you know, the, the secretary in the lounge said, well, just hang on a second. So Peter comes out a few minutes later and says, well, come on in. And I figured, well, okay, let's go. Let me go knock off the vocal. I figured I'd go to the mic, and they'd play the tape. And the tracks is already cut. And I walk in, and there's, there's yellow jackets. Mm -hmm. And they're set to go on the song. And there's a, there's a microphone and an ISO booth and a, and a stand. And I was going, wow, I'm singing with the band. And it was like, well, that's pretty cool. You know, I, I like that. Usually it's an overdub. I'm in there by myself with a producer, and that's it. So I sang it with the band. Then I banged out some backgrounds real quick. And then, uh, uh, and then, I, then we went to, and then I said, well, OK, I'm done. I, I guess I'll go. And Peter says, well, dig, dig this track that, that, that's happening here. So they play this track. I go, hey man, it sounds really good. Well, you know, what's going on with it? He says, well, the song's not written. And I says, well, he says, you want to write the song? I said, yeah, sure. He says, well, great. Here's a pencil. Here's the paper. Go write it. And so I wrote it on the stand and knocked it off. You know, knocked it off while it was happening. And it was just, it was kind of, hey, this is sort of the way it used to be. You know, because even you know, and, and I think what it is is Peter didn't know you're not supposed to do that anymore. You're supposed to use sequences, and you're supposed to do that. He just went the old-fashioned way. He says, "Here's a bunch of musicians. Let's make. Here's a song. Let's make some noise in the room." And uh, it was really kind of cool. It was the first time I'd met Russ Ferrante, and I love him. He's always been one of my favorite piano players. Jimmy Haslip. I'd, I'd met Jimmy before. I'd done some other stuff with Jimmy before. And, uh, and Mark Witchman on guitar, it was swinging, man. It was just swinging. And I just went, wow, this, this, this kid, he doesn't know that you can't do that, so he's doing it. You know how sometimes you go, everybody says, well, you, you know, hello, I'll get it. <laughs> so it's going to keep ringing, I guarantee you. They recorded it. They, they, they recorded it, and they said, hey, while we're at it, they found a YouTube of uh, Chicago playing it. And that was this, one of the songs that didn't make 17 album, right? So, uh, and they, uh, so they, they found a YouTube of it with Chicago playing it. So they called me and said, hey, you, you want to come help us do the backgrounds and sing a little bit on this song? I said, since you're going to be over here anyway. I said, absolutely, I'd love to, but rearrange the, the horns or you're going to have panko in your face you know what i mean so uh he told chorborn who's the, or torbjorn who's the trombone player and arranger for their section who's awesome by the way he's a great arranger amazing. very educated amazing. musician and uh and and this you know uh rune the trumpet player said well i'll tell i'll tell our arranger and, and he wrote me back he says our ranger said yeah that's even better you know instead of trying to play the same thing so we did a version of it, and it's just the uh, first verse that their singer sings, and then I sing a verse, and, and it's really, really cool. They did a really good job on it. Just They're great. really great. Awesome, awesome Sweet players, guys. you know, and really good. Really and they fun. were, they, when we got Crazy. over there, we got, oh, they're fun, man. They're <laughs> fun guys. When we got over there for, uh, for rehearsals, they had the vocals so nailed. It was just great, you know. And their piano players are just, you know, he's, he's, he's a TV star. In Norway, just like uh, Stefan is a TV star here in, in, uh, in Sweden, but uh, and it's one of these guys that just plays great. And both both Stefan and and Trun uh, over in Norway, they're both just great piano players.